Hey, incredible friends. So I have been meaning to sit down and record an update video for a really long time, but I just keep putting it off because I didn't want to have to make another video like this. Um, but we're going to get into some kind of deep stuff just so you guys know, like, why we disappeared yet again. So we are going to talk about some things that are kind of difficult, like loss and grief and some medical issues without details. So if your kids that are watching this, you might want to go like stop this video, go get your parents, see if it's something that they might want to watch first. Um, parents, you might want to watch it first and then just see if you think maybe your kids are a little bit sensitive and wouldn't want to hear some of these things, I totally understand. So we'll give you guys a minute to like pause here and then figure out if you want to keep watching this. This is part one of the update on what's actually been going on with us and what's going on with us now. And also some of this stuff goes back to the beginning of the pandemic, but it's all connected, I promise. So if this gets a little bit long, I'm sorry. There really is a point to all of it, I promise, I promise. <laughs> okay, so a lot of you guys come to us from our K-12 videos, like the unboxings and things like that. That's where we get most of our traffic from. And I've always been honest with you guys about how I feel about the stuff that they send in the mail and things like that. And I really felt like I owe it to you guys to explain that we are no longer with K-12 and we will never go back. <laughs> I would never recommend a school that I don't believe in or a curriculum that I don't believe in and that I wouldn't use myself with my own kids. So that's why it was really important for me to be able to explain to you guys why we're no longer with them. That's going to be in another video that's coming because there is so much to get into. And I promise you guys, I'm going to be very honest and tell you everything. This is why we have not hardly made any videos except for like maybe I think I've posted one or two in the past like year and a half since the last update. So after the last update, we had another major loss and that is ultimately, that's the short of it. But if you want to know a little bit more why it's been so hard for us to make videos and things, this is the full story. We started this channel because our family had been through a lot. Um, my husband had been wounded in Afghanistan and had a really difficult recovery from that. The kids and I were injured in a car accident that left us with traumatic brain injuries as well. Because of the way the military documents everything and the fact that there was some media attention that my husband got whenever he was wounded or in the years following, we really felt like the worst days of our lives were documented. So we wanted to document the amazing things. That's why on our channel, we really focused on just sharing the positive stuff. It wasn't a business for us. This is not a business. This was me trying to document and like preserve memories of the really happy times that we made in the midst of some really not fun times. But it became harder and harder for us to only <laughs> only film or talk about the really good stuff because unfortunately we originally like whenever we started all this we really thought that the worst of things were behind us and that just like wasn't true because <laughs> life happens and it keeps happening so that's why we've kind of been pretty silent and we haven't been able to post a lot of videos because I felt very conflicted with the fact that we have gone through so much and so many issues and crises keep arising on just a daily basis that it's almost impossible to like weed that out. It's kind of all mingled together. So it was like, if we're only going to film the absolute best, most positive moments while there's all these fires to be put out all around us, like we just couldn't keep up with it and we couldn't keep up with well, we can't talk about this on, and we can't talk about that. We can't reference this. So like when half your house is kind of torn apart and there's 
projects going on all over the place because you are depressed and grieving and have no energy and you can't finish things, you can't put holiday decorations away and stuff starts piling up and it's like, well, we can't talk about that. We can't mention it, but it's gonna look weird. So we just became so restricted that it was easier to just not post videos. So here's, here's what's happening. And this only goes back to the issues um, since 2020, there was actually stuff before this, but our story for today's purposes starts in 2020. So my grandma on my mom's side of the family, she has always been my best friend and we are so close. We have an amazing relationship. In 2017, she was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Again, I promise, stick with me. This actually impacts life today currently, I promise. So she was diagnosed with cancer, stage four, and she fought really, really hard. And we were able to make amazing memories with her. In the fall of 2019 though, she took a turn for the worse and the doctor said she had months. In January of 2020, she went into hospice. Now everyone was like, you gotta get prepared. You gotta be prepared. This is it. The doctor said she doesn't have that much longer. This is it. You gotta be prepared. It's coming. But her and I just didn't see it that way. <laughs> um, it was crazy. God gave me so much peace that that was not it. And I prayed so much. I mean, I was on my knees every single day, at least once a day, if not more. Anytime God put her on my heart to pray for her, I was literally on my knees. And I just knew, you know what? God hears our prayers. I just, and she kind of felt the same. She would say to me, yeah, I feel good. It's, I, I don't feel like this is it. And we talked on the phone every day, of course, because she was in a very delicate situation immune wise, we didn't go over there a lot. But I called her on the phone every single day. And especially once the pandemic happened, it was really important that we keep distancing from her, but keep talking to her again. I, I talked to her every day. And over time, it was crazy. Everyone else was like, yeah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Like she's gonna, the, the doctors have said, I swear, once March rolled around and the pandemic started, it was like I could hear a change in her voice every day and she was getting stronger. She wasn't, she wasn't going anywhere. So around the spring of 2020, I, my grandparents called my grandma's doctor and in my mind, the conversation went something like, um, she's not dying can you do another scan? <laughs> like, <laughs> she's still here. Um, so they did scans and they found that even cutting all treatment, her body was able to rest and her body was stronger and the cancer had not grown any, not at all. And oh my gosh, we were just, we were so excited whenever they said, you're strong enough that you can start a new treatment. So she started immunotherapy instead of chemotherapy, which was great for her because it helped like get the cancer under control. And it also let her like, she wasn't feeling terribly sick like she was with the chemo and she was able to gain weight and get stronger. She got so much stronger that in July of 2020, they graduated her out of hospice care. They said, you are too strong and too healthy. You have just, we can't help you anymore. You're just wasting our time. Yeah, and I love that. I love that so much. And we were so excited. Like God is faithful and he answered our prayers. I knew that my best friend who had been there for me literally since the day I was born was going to be okay because she was getting better. So we wanted to celebrate. We decided that since we couldn't be together for her birthday that April, that we were going to get her a cake and on the cake, I'll put a picture of it somewhere. The cake said goodbye hospice 
and we plan to go over there on a Saturday and just spend time together. We needed to pick up the cake on Friday. I can't even like describe how cloud nine high I was. It was the best celebration. It wasn't anyone's birthday. It wasn't a holiday, but it still felt like the biggest thing that we could possibly celebrate. That night though, life completely changed. That night, Lucy came to us after Tag went to sleep and she said something like, I think I've grown an extra rib and I actually have an extra rib and an extra vertebrae, but it's like from birth. <laughs> um, so I was like, well, that's not how that works, but okay, what are we talking about? And she showed us that sticking out of her sternum was this bony mass and it looked like an extra rib that was just dislocated. We did not talk about this very much at all. You guys saw a couple snippets of things back then, but we didn't talk about it because we asked Lucy. We we're like, this is your this is your story, this is your life. You get to decide if we share this with anybody or not. And at the time, she did not want to share it. She just wanted to get through it and that was totally fine. So we did not mention anything else on our channel, but that night we were like, hmm, okay, that's not normal. There's something going on because you don't just suddenly have like a rock hard mass growing out of your body. And she had had no injuries or anything. Basically, that was the start of an almost nine month period where we were trying to find out what was going on with Lucy. And the possibilities were deformity, or tumor, which might or might not have been cancerous, but the fact that it was rock hard and um, not movable was not a good sign. We spent months and were passed from doctor to doctor, and sometimes it was so quick of a handoff, they would send her records and her information to a different office because they would say, I don't I, no, that's not me. I don't, I don't, I have no idea what's going on here, but this person will know. And then this person would call me and say, I have no idea what this is. You're going to have to go to this other person. In the midst of having the best celebration of our lives that my grandma and the kids are super close to her too. So, in the midst of all of that, we're suddenly faced with the fact that our child might have cancer. She had to live with not knowing what was going on with her. It wasn't this simple thing where they just did one test and were able to rule things out. She had x-rays, ultrasounds, CAT scans, MRI. That was life-changing for us as parents. Like there's just no it felt like an out of body experience. I was like, there is no way that our child even has the possibility of having cancer. That cannot be real. Like this, this happens to other people. You always hear about it happening to other people. You don't think my child has a real chance of that. She was 11 at the time. This was just a couple months before her 12th birthday and it, rocked us to the core. There was nights when after the kids would go to bed, I would come out to the porch and my husband would have to just hold me because I would break down crying so hard. We could not have gotten through that without God. Like because of what we went through with my grandma, I was able to see and just have this constant reminder that he does answer prayers. Like I had living proof of that. Even in those dark, out of body, nightmarish type experiences, he's still there. In October of 2020, Lucy actually threw us for another loop. We ended up having to take her in for an emergency eye surgery to have metal removed from her eye. That was a fun day. She had been on a playground and then there was a rainstorm and whenever we were walking back in the rain, the kids were kicking up water at each other on the sidewalk. And we think the only explanation for it is that a tiny speck of metal off something like a truck or, you know, construction debris or whatever was in 
the dirt on the sidewalk that got kicked up and splashed her eye. But the one, there was another possibility if it wasn't metal, which they, you know, they found out pretty quickly that it was, but the other possibility was eye cancer. So we were like, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? We're exhausted. Thank you very much. So we found out though, it was a piece of metal and she had to have an emergency procedure to get it removed because it was already rusting. And it was kind of close to the part of the eye. I guess it's the retina. Yeah, the retina. Hers was kind of close to her retina. So had it been over just even very slightly or had the rust penetrated more and been able to travel further, she could have like lost some of her vision or all of her vision in that eye. So we were very, very fortunate. And she handled the whole thing really well. She had some complications afterwards, but we were able to kind of get back on track. Um, but the night that her procedure happened was also the night that my grandfather on my dad's side of the family died very suddenly. And we did mention that in a video um, back then. So that was grief that I was not prepared for. And that definitely triggered a lot of depression for me. We're dealing with this very long period, way too long when we're trying to find out, does our kid have cancer? And finally in, it was sometime in March of 2021, we, she was finally cleared. In the end, what they think happened is that she had hit a really big growth spurt before we found the, we call it her protuberance. If you watch The Office, you get the reference. Theory is that she actually had an injury, maybe like a, um, like a fracture or something when we were in the accident. And she had complained that um, her chest had been sore, but at the time everyone was like, yeah, that's really normal because of the force of it. And because of the way the seat belt, like, you know, kind of pulls you back and stuff, that's very, very normal. So we think that she had a fracture at that time. And then whenever she had that growth spurt that girls get where they just like shoot up out of nowhere, they think that her body saw that old injury and thought that it was new. So then it sent a bunch of cells and growth to it to protect it, you know? And that that's the best scenario that we can come up with. So that took us to spring of 2021 by August of 2021, many of you guys know that Afghanistan fell and that was a really intense experience for us because my husband gave up his livelihood for Afghanistan. I know so many people who gave their lives over there. So to, to watch it unfold the way it did, the way the withdrawal happened and to see it just kind of crumble back, knowing that we had allies and interpreters over there. As you guys know, there was a lot of operations to get people out of there and I can't really get into that anymore, but let's just say that was that was an emotional undoing. <laughs> it was incredibly stressful and just kind of devastating emotionally to see the fallout from that. That was around the time that the things that I talked about in my last update video, this is when that stuff started happening. So the COVID case numbers were just going up. My grandfather who passed away the day of Lucy's eye procedure, he was a musician and there was a stage being dedicated to him at this festival. So I had planned on surprising my uncle who I had been estranged from um, but was building a relationship with. And I was really, really excited to be able to surprise him and my dad's mom um, by going to this festival and just showing up with my husband and my kids who they had never met. So with the stress of what was going on in Afghanistan and also the fact that COVID cases were so high, we didn't feel comfortable going, so we stayed home. My husband also got really sick. So he left here one night in an ambulance and that was terrifying. It was also happened to be 
the same night that my uncle was removed from life support. We're into September. Everybody's in the hospital or recovering at home and my dad's family passed away. So now at this point, his whole household that he grew up with has died. There's so much to do, like losing multiple people at once and losing people to COVID. I had no idea how traumatic that was gonna be, but it was brutal. We did not cook, the only food we ate for probably about two months was either DoorDash or leftovers because nobody had the actual physical strength to get up and make food. That was just a really difficult time emotionally. None of us had like physical or mental strength about us. We were just surviving and doing the bare minimum. So my husband did not fully recover and start gaining back his strength until around Christmas of 2021. But then for most of 2022, he was actually dealing with the effects of long COVID. Because of his long COVID symptoms, throughout 2022, he was actually screened for three different cancers throughout the year. And each time it would come back negative, which was great. It was just like another long COVID symptom that we had to get through. And it took his body so long to recover from that. So that was, all, that was the first nine months of 2022 for us was recovering from the trauma and recovering physically from the effects of 2021. My husband finally starts feeling better in like early September, 2022. That was around the time that I posted my last update video. The day after I posted that video, Tag actually started having seizure type episodes that nobody has been able to figure out. They came on out of nowhere and they were so bad at first, they were coming like every single day, um, probably like five out of seven days. It was, it was bad enough that he, one of him and Lucy's favorite things to do once they get done doing school is they go to the gym area of the basement and they like play games and stuff. They have monkey bars down there. They have a swing. They have all kinds of other stuff. He basically was, he was almost bedridden for like a month. He did not get off the couch at all. And then he would barely eat or drink. And then it was still probably, it was about six months until he felt comfortable going away from an adult, like mostly me, um, to like go play downstairs with Lucy. Um, because he was so scared that it was going to happen like while he was down there and away from me. So at this point, we're again back in and out of doctors and trying to figure out what's going on. There was some good doctors and there was some good input. And there was also some people who were very dismissive of him. One doctor literally looked at him and said, um, this is happening because your brain isn't strong and you need to draw a picture of yourself shaking and then rip it up and then draw a picture of you not shaking and you won't have these episodes anymore. I am all about some like positive thinking and I've done years of therapy on like rewiring your brain to view things differently and stuff, but this was not it. <laughs> um, this wasn't it. So if you're keeping track by now, you've realized that since the beginning of 2020, when my grandma went into hospice, there's been no break. There's been, we've barely caught our breath when we've had to start fighting something else again. It's like the second one fire is put out, another one pops up. Um, Tag started his episodes and um, my grandma's cancer came back and well it never fully went away but it started growing again. She was hanging in there and fighting really hard and then just a few days after Thanksgiving she passed away and it was it still felt very sudden. That was I still struggle with that. That was just such an 
epic loss for me and the kids. Some of the good things though that have come about since then is we have been able to spend so much time with my grandpa and you know we tried to be aware when my grandma was in treatment and stuff of like being around her and introducing new germs and things and we would be really careful about that but now because we have switched to regular homeschooling and left k-12 we have a lot more flexibility in our schedule and we're able to go spend a lot of time with my grandpa and that has been like the hugest blessing and all i don't know if is hugest a word hugest most huge I don't know. Should I be homeschooling my children? The jury's out on that. <laughs> um, I feel like I should know that. It sounds weird though, but um, it's okay. I don't learn my English from you. I learned it from I learned it from books. That's true. That's fair. I truly believe that God is good and He has a plan, even in the midst of all of the loss and the grief and depression that we have had to face over the past several years I think I'm positive that he knew what he was doing I know that he knew that losing my grandma would be a massive loss and life-changing moment for me no matter when it happened and I honestly like think that there's I think that that's part of why we still have my grandpa here um because God knew that everybody would need him. And the kids are able to, they play games with him. We've taught him how to make homemade pasta. We cook together. Um, we, we do a lot of like talking and storytelling with him, which is really great. He's actually a polio survivor and he spent months in the hospital as a kid. He actually would, um, sneak out of the hospital and kind of terrified his parents and the doctors and nurses by doing that <laughs> once he was like a little bit better um not like in the early parts of it but he has these amazing stories like that and it's just it, like he he googles dad jokes like if he thinks he's like run out of them he googles well grandpa jokes and he'll like tell them to the kids and stuff because they love cheesy jokes and he gets so excited about finding new ones. It's really, it's been sweet like learning things about him that I never knew before because there's some things that I knew from when I was a kid but my grandma's personality was just larger than life. My grandma was an extrovert. She was the life of the party. The best part of our weeks though now is getting to spend time with my grandpa and getting to learn all these things like about his childhood and his teenage years and things that he did and stuff. That's That's been like a huge thing for me. It's been life-giving. So that's kind of what we've been doing. And last year, my grandpa actually had a couple of strokes and that was also like really just a terrifying time because I thought I have lost family members. I've actually lost family members every year since 2017. And that amount of grief, just one right after another, it's exhausting, guys. It, no matter how positive you try to be, it's just a lot. It's a lot to process and carry. So that's what we've been going through. It affects every part of our life, right? Yeah. It's like, trying to not talk oh and she did give me permission to share with you guys <laughs> the grief and depression has been super hard for me personally so like editing videos is just a nightmare we've been we have recorded stuff and at some point i am going to try to get more of those posted there are some videos i have videos all the way back to like summer of 2021 that i didn't post because that was when stuff started happening in Afghanistan and I just didn't have the free mental space to also do editing. And there's part of me that wants to share those videos, but then some we might just keep for ourselves because we've had so much crisis 
and we've had to rely so much on just the four of us that I kind of, there's some that I just want to keep just for us. So we're going to try to be posting more videos. I can't promise like what the consistency will be and I can't really say that they're going to be exactly like the old videos that we used to do. I think there's going to be more like vlog stuff and I do have a lot of videos coming about homeschooling stuff. We do have more things coming and it's not like we don't want to get and like every video isn't going to be like this. We may mention some things once in a while that are going on because like I said, it affects every part of our life pretty much. Our family really loves Kid Cities videos and we have just watched them for years and years. When they first started their podcast, Tag of all people was like, he said something like, our life is pretty crazy. We have a lot to talk about. And it kind of made me think, yeah, what if we do that? What if that way we don't have to post so much heavy stuff on here? Um, this can be more like fun things and helpful things and school things and stuff, you know, kind of like try to keep it close to what it's been. And then we can get a little bit more deep and honest and stuff in a podcast. That way people, if they don't want so much of the heavy stuff, like you don't have to have it like intermingled in there and stuff. So we're kind of working on possibly doing that <laughs> in the future. Whenever it happens, I will post details about that. I'm actually looking for microphones and stuff right now to help with that. Just get a little bit better sound quality and yeah, I I think that that would be a cool way to set things up and to keep some balance and stuff. So that's kind of, we have a lot of fun stuff coming. I have like really fun trip videos to share with you guys from a while. <laughs> that's the truth about what's going on with us. There's actually two major, insanely stressful and life impacting situations that I was not even able to share with you for legal reasons. <laughs> so, um, that's only, that's still only a snapshot. And I was like, Oh wait, no. Oh wait. Okay. Like three, <laughs> because I know. <laughs> yeah. So that's not even like every crisis that we've had to deal with. That's just the ones that I'm able to share with you guys now. I forgot about all my cardiologist visits and the EDS. Oh, <laughs> dude. Yes. Okay. Yes. She's right. <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to get to that. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, Yes, yeah, so Lucy does have a couple of cardiology issues and she, in 2022, TAG wore a heart monitor for two weeks to try to get some data to see if maybe something during his like seizure episodes was happening um, cardi cardiac wise, cardiologically. Cardiologically, yeah. I, I like, like that. <laughs> um, and then we got basically no answers from his. And then Lucy had to wear a heart monitor last fall, almost a year exactly after Tag got his heart monitor off. She had to wear one. And this year we basically confirmed that um, she does have EDS, which is Ehlers-Dan... El Ehlers-Danlos Yeah, I always get the L's. Like my dyslexia brain switches some of the L's. But, um, I just also am not good with talking, but so yeah, um, that, that has been interesting because Lucy has a lot of different symptoms like through, <laughs> through yeah, backwards so we're not, elbows. she does have backwards elbows and, um, crazy hypermobile joints. Please do not dislocate your shoulder I'm not for going us. To. We don't want that. I didn't want to until you said something about it. <laughs> now it's tempting. Yeah. She's had like issues that cover so many different things like joint issues and um, cardio and stomach fatigue, like all of these different things 
and stuff. So like people have asked me, the, the few people who do know, cause not a lot of people mm -hmm. know, but the people who do know have asked me how you're taking the like EDS thing. And what I say is, it seems like that we're just kind of relieved that like we can put a name on it and there's an explanation for yeah. like, it. I mean, you've lived with so, huh? Oh, <laughs> no. um, but like you've, you've lived with so many different inconveniencing symptoms, painful symptoms and stuff. Yeah. And now it's like, like calling it something doesn't change that. Mm -hmm. Not calling it something doesn't change that, but like you can finally have an explanation for it. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. I'll be like, I'll like there they'll be like so if there's like people around or something and I'll say like uh oh, my joints hurt or I frequently say her joints that hurt quote, a lot I feel so old um they're like and people will be like no you're not allowed to feel old you're you're 15 you're not allowed to feel old you got but time. your body's a lot I'm older. like it's n no <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> If you had if you had fifteen year old joints, then you know Yeah, then that sure. Yeah. But like Yeah. It it's just nice to be able to say like this actually like has a reason. There's not it's not that you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know I'm not exaggerating. You're not exaggerating. <laughs> no, you're not like when somebody's like, Oh, you know, this hurts, I need to sit down, I can't do that. Like you're you're not copy I mean, you dance like I over dance 20 hours is it at least at least 20, 20 hours, hours a, week. a week and stuff um and that actually that's the other question a lot of people I say a lot not a lot of people know but everyone who does know has said how how does she feel about the diagnosis and what about dance and like being active though is going to help your body yeah like it yeah so you still like dance? Yeah. I, I can't live without it. <laughs> I can't live without it. Yeah. If so, I stopped, I would be so depressed. <laughs> well, yeah. And your body would slowly your, deteriorate. Your body would slowly get worse Yeah. or faster get worse, I guess is probably a, yeah. um, so there you go. <laughs> My pediatrician <laughs> says I'm like 40. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a, uh, it, that's, that's what we've been dealing with. Mm -hmm. And there's no way around it. It just, it, this is our life. That is what's going on with us. And that's our actual real life. Not the, uh, like, scripted or, what's the word? Curated. curated. Yeah, because, like, when, whenever we do, like, challenges and different videos like that, like, we literally, like, I don't think we've had we've ever had a video that's had like a script or a like a prearranged like anything. It's just whatever. This is our real life. This is yeah. this is like the realest of the real. That's where we've been, what we've been dealing with and what we continue to deal with. Yeah. But I hope you guys will stick around. The kids are taller. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um ah, sorry that's all right um this is funnier like <laughs> life has life has gotten intense and insane and difficult but um god is good and we have each other right yeah. we've spent a lot of quality time that's the other thing we haven't sometimes we haven't been like filming like these things that take me a while to like plan and set up and stuff because like we've just been like you know what let's lay on the couch and watch a movie and play some roblox together like let's do that we need that we we really needed that downtime so we appreciate you guys if you're still here if you actually watch to the end of this good for you how long is this gonna be when you edit it down? i don't know probably like 40 minutes <laughs> all right guys it has an eye twitch now <laughs> check back for um this next video that we're about to record so that we can tell you all the tea on k-12 and virginia virtual academy there's a and lot the, yeah it's, it's bad yeah. <laughs> we'll see you soon guys bye